tucked into the corner of a strip mall. Some of you may be aware of it, Le Petitier. I've been going there for as far back as I can remember, ever since I would lick the blueberry cream cheese out of the croissant because the bread should have held the same sugar content as the filling in my mind. Mom would take me there countless mornings, and often the two of us would run into a mother and her daughter. I don't remember how we met them, but the elderly mother, Buddy, had white hair and papery skin and sparkling eyes, the kind that toddlers have, full of curiosity. Her daughter, Florence, always greeted us with a big smile and a little wave. Our conversations were short and they were sweet, and I regret that I don't remember much of them. However, what I do know is that every time when we were about to part ways, Buddy would take my hand into hers and tell me in a voice of strong sincerity, make a good day. Make a good day. Buddy passed away five years ago, right before hitting 100 years old. And for a very long time after that, I didn't know anything about her, and I didn't see Florence. When I learned of her passing, I began to think increasingly more intensely about the idea of making a good day. I'd always interpreted it as, though at birth, we are dealt a hand of cards, such as our ethnicity, our gender, our economic background, and these cards often dictate the size of our hurdles throughout life, the way that we played our cards, the way that we respond to those hurdles, is of our own doing and not left up to chance. An off branch of this idea that I was and still am particularly focused on is quite simply turning that frown upside down. Or consciously not getting mopey in frustrating situations because it won't improve the situation. And I'm going to be honest with all of you, I'm not good at this. In fact, I'm particularly bad at it, but I feel I'm getting better, and we'll get back to that later as well. But I started to wonder if making a good day was truly feasible for everybody. I'm going to throw some science at you. According to an article, a uh, summary, by the Iranian Journal of Health on some studies done here in America, quote, happiness's underlying factors are considerable from two dimensions, endogenic factors, such as biological, cognitive, personality, and ethical sub-factors, and exogenic factors, such as behavioral, social, cultural, economical, geographical, life events, and aesthetic sub-factors. Among all endogenic factors, biological sub-factors are the significant predictors of our happiness. So, in other words, genetics are playing a huge role in how happy we are. So there was a study done by the American Journal of Human Genetics regarding the 5-HTTLPR gene, which codes the distribution of serotonin throughout the brain. 5-HTTLPR comes in two forms, short and long. You can have 2S allele, 2L allele, 1S, or 1L allele. The study found that those subjects with more L allele were found to be happier and have better life satisfaction levels than those with more S allele. So in other words, we're not all born with the same baseline level of happiness. Some of us are going to have to work harder to achieve that good day because our genetics are influencing how we respond to exogenic factors. I asked 50 of my peers, ranging from freshman to senior year, whether or not they thought they made a good day. No wrong answer. In response to my question, I got a lot back. Do you mean I make a good day for myself, for other people? I'm really confused. And seeing as how I didn't fully know what I meant either, I simply told them to interpret it however they wanted. The following are some of the responses that I received. Some explained how you could break a good day. Quote, I think the day, excuse me, I think the days can come to you, but only if you cooperate with them. You can have a perfect day thrown at you, but they will only be good if that's how you interpret it." End quote. I was explained how making a good day didn't always feel possible. Quote, I think I try, but sometimes I get bogged down by the details. Also, sometimes I wake up and it feels like my brain has set me up for failure and the day feels great and everything feels wrong and I don't really know how to describe it, but it's hard for me to function on those days. <coughs> Others still explained how their actions affected their day. Quote, I think I make it a good 
day by making others happy, which lifts me up, making it a good day for me, end quote. And one junior, Crescent Valley's very own Gwen Gray, gave the enthusiastic response of, quote, I make every freaking day a great day. Good does not even cut it. I don't mess with the good nonsense. It better be stellar or no dice. If you're trying to bring down my day, I will use pressure points on you, and I will destroy you. <laughs> if a day is mediocre, I flip it upside down and shake it up until something great comes out of it, like a waffle or a pat on the back. End quote. I'll give us all a moment to process and appreciate that. <laughs> but probably one of the most poignant responses I received was simply, ooh, IDK. <laughs> I don't know. Because that's the truth, isn't it? If we all knew how to make a good day, we'd all be having fantastic days all the time. But we aren't. If you search why am I not happy into Google, you'll get 5,945,000,000 results. If you search how to be happy, that number jumps to 8,340,000,000. As I was leaping through the internet's many, many articles, forums, and blogs regarding happiness, I noticed two general schools of thought. Those that believed that happiness was something that had to be consciously sought, and those that believed that happiness was more like a butterfly. Every time you tried to grab it, it would flit away, but it'd come rest on your shoulder when you weren't looking. My own thought of how to be happier is still developing, but in the general sense, I believe that happiness it comes about when you consciously rid your life of the things that are promoting negativity. To quote Marie Kondo, an organizational consultant and author, does it spark joy? Don't hinder your life with things that don't. This might mean anything from cleaning out a closet of clothes that you don't wear anymore to dropping a toxic friend. And it's not always applicable. I get that. There are going to be times where we have to stay in contact with people that cause us pain. But it's in those moments where you take a step back and you look at yourself as a person. Let's say your sister complains too much. Well, maybe look at how your own behavior triggers her. That's not to say it's your fault, but your own attitude adjustment might help jumpstart her journey towards self-improvement. A few months back, I went to that petitia again with a letter in hand to give to the owner, Trini. I asked Trini to please give it to Florence if she ever ran into her, or if they somehow knew each other's contact info. Inside this letter was my contact information and my desire to meet up and talk about Buddy. Well, 20 days ago, I got a call from an unknown number. Six days later, I was on Florence's front doorstep, about to see her for the first time in five years. The first thing that Florence handed me when I took step into her home was a notebook filled with 18 pages worth of content that she had written to me on the life of her mother. Those very pages are outside in the cafeteria for all of you to see, if you do so choose. Buddy was born as Theta Lyndon Danielle on February 23rd of 1915, and it was a name that she hated. Instead, she went by Buddy, because that's what the soldiers of World War I would call each other, and it was a name that stuck. She signed all of her legal documents as Buddy D, a.k.a. Theta L. She grew up playing in sawmills and working in the fields. And when she graduated from high school, she was offered a scholarship to Linfield College, but she rejected it on account that the courses that were offered to women did not interest her. This fieriness, this refusal to simply accept whatever was offered, would follow her for the rest of her life. While working as janitorial staff at Oregon State University, Buddy realized that herself and her female co-workers were being paid $100 less a month than their male counterparts. When Oregon passed the Equal Pay for Equal Work Act, she took Oregon State University to court, she sued them, and she won. Uh, Buddy, would always, Buddy was put into a building, a three-story tall building, where she was hauling buckets up and down the stairs every single day during this court case janitorial closet in the basement. But she did not let it face her. She would always say that if I can get out of bed, I can work. And she worked. She was never stopped acting or 
creating or moving. At 85 years old, Buddy was still hauling and placing stone pavers for her garden. At 90 years old, her doctor told her that she had to get out of the car and stretch every 30 minutes on the drive up to Canada because of her acid reflux. She didn't just stretch. She got out and she got in her daily, <laughs> daily jumping jacks. Florence told me of a time where she had to rush home because she got a call from the neighbors that Bunny was on top of a ladder with a chainsaw cutting off the tops of the trees. <laughs> when I asked Florence what was one thing that Bunny would want everybody in this room to take with them for the rest of their life, she said it was, quite simply, to make a good day. We are a flawed emotional group simply because of the reality that we are people. And I hate to dive into cliches about the nature of human beings, but we do laugh, and we do cry, and we do mess up, and get frustrated, and overwhelmed, and stressed, and making a good day can be the last thing on our minds. But nobody here, nobody, is too young, too old, or too busy to begin to think carefully and consciously about what it is that is stopping their great day. What's making you feel inadequate? self-conscious. Now how are you going to address that instead of simply sweeping it under the rug again? We have been dealt a hand of cards, but we have not been dealt a play. And that is why I encourage each and every one of you here to take Buddy's message to heart and explore what it truly means to make a good day. Thank you.